Hi everybody, this is Lonnie. Um, I'm trying to make a series of videos here for the newcomers to recreate Make It. Um, so that it's kind of like a tutorial. So you can get comfortable with it. Um, some of you don't even have your machines yet. But <clears throat> just so that you can play around with it and enjoy working on projects um, without feeling overwhelmed when you finally have your machine, have it set up, and now you don't know what to do. At least we'll work your way into it, let you be able to maneuver your way around uh, within the program. I'm going to try not to make any assumptions that you know or don't know anything, so don't be offended if I make it too easy, and um, if I mess up and make it too hard because I've been doing it so long I forget, I'm sorry about that. Ask questions, I'll try and break it down for you. Um, that being said, um, I'm not going to do the unboxing thing. There's 400 million YouTubes out there about unboxing these things um, and getting them set up. Um, that seems to be what everybody wants to do, but nobody wants to show you how to run the software and how to do it. So, to that end, let's begin. Okay, I've contemplated different ways to do this. Um, try to keep as many people as possible from getting lost on it. So we're basically going to do a rundown of everything that's on the screen uh, in the Make It program. We'll come back later. We'll pick an op project and we'll do a project. Um, but we want I want you to be comfortable with the software um, because if you're comfortable with it, then it still has enough confidence to where you can experiment around with it and not get frustrated and give up on it. Our main goal here is that you're comfortable, you can play around with it, and have some fun. If you do that, you'll get some more success out of your machine, and the end result will be much better. Okay, we're going to go into the program by hitting right here where it says New Project with a plus sign. Click on that, and up will come the program. The very first thing we're going to cover here is changing your screen. Right now, what you're looking at is a scrap piece of wood that I have laying on the print bed on the engraver, laser. Um, and that's perfectly fine if we had an image that we were manipulating, we wanted to see if it fit on it to cut it out or whatever, we would actually want to see what we we're doing. But we're going to... When we start working on images, it'll be a black image, and so half of it'll be over here. You won't be able to see it. Half of it'll be on here. You can see it. Um, but f so for ease of use, you want that to be a screen where black or any color is going to show up really good. A white screen. So you move your cursor anywhere on this page, and then you hit the right mouse button. The right mouse button's clicked, and this shows up. It says hide background. You move the mouse over a little bit to where it's on hide background and left click on it. Now this is your working area. When you have an image on there, you'll be able to see it. Um, so we'll, if we called up an image and we were working on it, you'd have a black image on here and you're like, okay, I think that's what I want. Let me go see if it fits on the piece of wood. You do the right click again and then left click on show background. And you can move your image over here and see if it fits on your piece of wood. You can resize it, set everything up that way, and you're good to go. So that's the way you do it. Right click, left click, flips back and forth between those two screens. Okay. I'm going to assume that you're familiar with Windows and how all that works. Um, you may or you may not. But we're gonna start at the top and work our way down. Right here it says what the name of the program is. We create make it. And you go all the way to the right and you've got a minimize button, a large and large, and an exit. Okay, minimize, restore down, then close. Anything you hover over, <coughs> I need to tell you what it is. Um, I can't really 
show you how to minimize, maximize, and stuff like that. The way the software that I'm running now that records the screen, um, if I minimize or maximize the screen, anything from where it is right now, I'll lose the, re the recording. So for now, you just have to trust me on those, and I assume you know how to run Windows, and that's how it is. The next line down, here's the We Create logo, and then the wor word edit. You click on edit. We're not in anything else, so it's not going to do anything. But we were doing something and we hit edit, it would change. Home. Home takes you back to where we were before. So I'm going to hit home. <clears throat> we're back here to the screen with all the projects on it. If you end up back here and you don't know where you're at, just scroll up to the top. And here's that box that we clicked on to get to where we were. We hit back to project. We're back here again. Okay. That's what the home button does. The settings button is, we're going to click on it. And up comes a menu here of items. I'm just going to briefly cover these items. And some of them will go into uh, in more detail later. Some of these items I've never ever messed with, so I'm not going to lie to you and say I know what they are, so I'll let you know when I get to those. Units. You can run millimeters or you can run inches. Um, it's your personal preference um, and what you're, what you're working on. Um, I do a lot of designing of different stuff, so mil millimeters is better because everything's a whole number. Uh, if you do inches, you got to deal with one and one quarter, one and one eighth. Uh, but it's your personal preference. You can run it either way you want to. Uh, and at any time during your project, you can flip back and forth. Um, I've been doing projects where you're given one and you need to transfer it to another. Uh, you can flip it for back and forth in the middle of the application and it, everything automatically inverts so you don't have to worry about it. Next line, English. You don't want to work on English, you click and you give you, they give you French, Dutch, Chinese, or Japanese, Chinese, I don't know what that is, but pick your language and go with it. <clears throat> Precise vector path selection, off and on. Yeah, and that's one of those I have no clue what that does at this time sometime in my life I'm sure I'll figure it out but there you go auto alignment on and off it's on leave it on um, the we create program um, is basically in its infancy um, but anything that they have done they have done correctly so if they decide that you should have auto alignment on, we have auto alignment on. Um, basically, it is what it is. It, it automatically aligns stuff for you. You don't want to be out there having to do all that stuff, so let it go. WLAN. Right now, I'm, my machine is hooked up via USB cable. Um, alternative to that is Wi-Fi. You can use click Wi-Fi settings and set them up. I don't have that set up. Um, I found that USB is more reliable. Um, if you've got 15 kids running around running on Wi-Fi and it slows everything down, you're going to notice it. Uh, when you're on USB, it's a direct connect faster, no matter how many people are running around on the internet. Serial number. Here's the serial number of my machine. If you hit copy, it takes this and puts it on the clipboard. So if you have any correspondence that you have with the company <clears throat> or you need to have that number, you don't have to type it out. You just hit copy, it puts it on the clipboard, and you go in town with that. You can change the device name. It's creator by default. Click here on this. You can add the device name to whatever you want. Air assist switch on. You can turn it on and off. Air assist is that little box that's hooked up to your machine. It blows air down in the laser head. And when it is uh, cutting or engraving, the little puffs of air keep the area clean. Um, and it, uh, when you're cutting the material all the way through, uh, that air assist makes a big difference in uh, keeping the cut clean. And uh, I mean, it'll still be burnt looking, but cuts better whenever the if the air is clean and is air or 
air force across it when it's hot. Auto focusing, uh, a laser beam that is focused will cut, etch, engrave, do its job. If it is not focused properly, um, it's just a light bulb. Um, making it simple. Um, leave the auto focusing on. That way you don't have to mess with it. It's always precise, it's always proper, and it will do its job. Lower the device to the bottom. Um, I don't ever mess with that. Um, when you hit that, make sure your metal grates are off of the bottom of the screen, or bottom of the machine. Um, the last thing you want to do is for have anything at all hit that laser. Um, so if you lower it down and there's something in there, you have a chance of breaking it. Uh, if you have those grates in there, you may hit it on accident or uh, if you move it and transport it with it in a lowered position and you jiggle it, one of those grates pops up, hits your laser, you can break it. So in order to avoid all that, um, take those out. When you received your machine, they weren't in there. They weren't in there for a reason. Make sure they're out when you put it in idle mode. Use when transporting equipment, hit transportation mode, and it will lower, lock everything down, and, and, and set it up to where it's ready to go. Auto mode, I've never used. Transportation mode, I've never used. May have to someday, but as of yet, I haven't had to. Camera calibration. You hit this button and it goes into camera calibration. I'm not going to go into it now. That's a whole another process in and of itself. Um, you need to do it um, when you get your machine. If your alignment doesn't look like it's right, you hit camera calibration and it'll calibrate it for you. It's a fairly easy process. However, you're waiting on the machine to uh, look at cross marks that it's made. Um, it's not foolproof. Um, sometimes it won't see if it it has nine cross marks that it has to read in order to commit complete one stage. If it misses one, it stops. And there are three separate stages that it has to pass. So it has to be right 27 times or it's going to fail and you're going to have to start all over again. So, um, like I say, you should do it. If it looks off, if it doesn't, just roll with it. MCU 1, MCU 2. I have no idea what that is. I'm not going to lie to you. Firmware version. This tells you um, what the firmware version is on the hardware that you're using. It's hardware. Firmware. Firmware is hardware. Um, it's the box. It's the the computer chip board in the box. Click here, it'll check for upgrades. Um, periodically, you may get a, a notice that says you need to upgrade stuff. You click there and it'll, it'll do it for you. Software version, right now I'm doing 1.0.4. If I click here, it'll check for upgrades. Log, I have no idea what that is. Um, if you hit log, it'll bring up a, a like Windows Explorer, and it'll have uh, error logs, error, error images, succeed images, and other stuff. So, but if you chances are, if you call technical support, you're going to have to come to this screen. They'll ask you questions about it, and you'll have to, to do it. Um, very last thing at the bottom, there's clicks for privacy policy, terms and conditions, and laser safety program. If you want to look at them, look at them. Okay, that's the bottom of that screen. We're done with it. We want it to go away. Upper right hand corner, just like any other Windows window, there's an X. Click on it. It goes away. Okay, the next thing in line is File. When you hover over File, it's a drop down menu and it has Create, Open, Save, Save As. Kind of like any other Windows program, but that's where it is on this machine. Um, if we were to hit Create, um, we can start making something. Open, open the existing file. If we've got something on the screen we just made and we want to save, you hit save, it'll prompt you for a name and put it in there. If you've already got a name on it, you hit save, it automatically saves it. If you're working on something and you uh, want to save it as something new, you hit save as and do it there. 
basic Windows stuff there. Where it says untitled here, if we were working on something that we had already done, it would come up and say what the name is, which did you work on. The next one's a question mark. That's your help screen. If I if you click on that, a window will come up, and you can look stuff up, ask you know, find help there. Um, I can't click on that now because, as I say, the software won't let me record anything from that. The little person there. Um, there's my name that shows that I'm on. And I can hit exit and, and exit out. Uh, in order for some of the stuff in this program to work, um, you have to be logged in. Um, so that will show you that you're logged in. Um, the next thing is start. If I had a something in here ready to go, I've done all the steps to make it happen, and I want it to go, I'll hit start, and then the magic will happen. Okay, I want to stop there for portion one. Um, I don't want to make a file long enough to work. People have problems with it, so I'm going to end, call that part one, and we'll come back and we'll do some of the other stuff down below.